Okay, so understanding problems to do with benches or planks are very, very important for the exam because the type of question that they like to ask on the exam is with either a bench or a plank or they might have a hospital bed or a stretcher. And either of those cases, it is the exact principles that apply. Another thing that, uh, you know, is getting a little bit popular because uh, of the sort of the medical angle of things is uh, joints, joints in the body. So let's do, look at a problem. Um, I would like you to try to resolve the forces, for example, of a forearm. So a forearm, just draw the forearm like a plank, like you would a plank. And um, let's say that you have a physics textbook that's standing on your uh, hand, that's just plopped on your hand, very realistic, happens all the time. You've been to Paris, you've seen uh, how, they, uh, uh, how they operate in the cafes. So, um, and then uh, take into account as well uh, what happens at the elbow. Um, I'm sure you're aware there's some things here. Uh, biceps muscle, there's a tricep muscle, there's a funny sounding bone called the humerus. So you have some action going on there. I don't know what's important and what's not important. I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying that those are things that are, happen to be there. The system is in equilibrium, okay? It's not accelerating anywhere. So just draw the up and down forces that you think would apply to the uh, forearm and hand as you are holding this physics textbook. So just pause, think about it, and then we'll talk about it. I guess you know that I didn't draw this. I'd like to say that this was supported by the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, 20 Million Minds Foundation, Maxfield Foundation, Open Society Foundations, and Rice University. And uh, thank goodness for Creative Commons, right? Okay, so I just want to orient you uh, around uh, this uh, forearm. First, you're holding that physics textbook just like a Parisian waiter. <laughs> and, um, and the uh, textbook has a center of gravity, of course, and that's where its weight acts downwards. So we have the weight of the book uh, acting downwards here. We have the hand and forearm here in the center of gravity of that. We have the weight of the arm acting downwards at the center of gravity of the uh, forearm and arm. And then we have these muscles. And uh, of course, uh, you may know that uh, muscles can only contract and relax. Muscles cannot extend. So um, because they can only contract uh, and relax, it means that they have to operate in pairs around uh, joints like the elbow joint that's here. So we have the bicep muscle and we have the tricep uh, muscle. We know that when the bicep contracts, it helps to uh, close the uh, limb. And so that's why it's called a flexor. And you know the biceps can flex. And uh, the triceps muscle can also flex, but it extends the joint because of its placement. So that when it uh, flexes or contracts, it extends the joint. Okay, so um, uh, looking at the different uh, forces, we have the uh, uh, biceps, which is an upward force, um, and uh, we have the downward force of the upper arm at the elbow joint, and so that's given by Fe. And, and you notice these uh, vectors here, they're sort of a parallel lines that are involved here. And the reason they have these uh, parallel lines is because these vectors would actually be really huge. It's a, it, you know, it's, it's part of um, a torque forces that if you uh, apply a force as far as possible from the pivot point, then your torque force multiplies. Well, it's um, a strange uh, uh, development that our muscles um, so many of them are inserted very close to the joint and therefore in order to uh, do work the muscle has to exert a force way greater than uh, the object that is over there because it's so close to the uh, joint. If it was uh, placed far from the joint, then it would be able to multiply its torque force, um, but that is not the case. 
Okay, so we uh, have our different forces and to summarize this, to remove all this and summarize it, a free body diagram can be produced and in the free body diagram which summarizes what's going on, we have uh, what's going down is the, uh, uh, the weight of the arm, um, the weight of the book and the um, downward force from the upper arm at the elbow joint and then what's going up is the force of the uh, biceps and that's what's holding it. And in fact, uh, you know, if you have any f uh, friends or whatever that have been emergency room physicians, uh, most of them will have seen um, a patient come in with a big lump in the uh, upper part of their arm and then some absent area or concave area down here because uh, of tearing their uh, biceps uh, tendon and when that happens of course this part all goes right down uh, flops down because they cannot hold it up any longer okay so let's look at a uh, vector diagram also that could help simplify this Okay, so just to orient you again, so over here we have the weight of the book directed downwards. We have the weight of the arm, which is uh, being experienced, the center of gravity of the arm and hand. And we have the upward force from the biceps and the downward force uh, from the upper arm at the elbow joint. And then the distances, R1, R2, and R3. Of course, we would take as the pivot point the elbow. I mean, uh, how could you not take uh, the joint uh, as, as the pivot point? And by the way, uh, of course, one of the benefits of taking this as a pivot point uh, besides the fact that it is the part that turns, is that um, it eliminates uh, one of the forces, one of the unknown forces, because you can calculate the weight of the arm, you can calculate the weight of the book, but um, uh, the force of the biceps and the force of the upper arm, uh, that, um, um, that can be calculated at least or determined, but those are not numbers that you would uh, necessarily know in advance. So by eliminating one of the unknowns, uh, then it's easy to calculate. Because then you look at the torque forces and you equate the torque forces and you have the clockwise torque forces, turning forces like this. And that would be uh, the weight of the book multiplied by R3. That would be one clockwise torque force. Another clockwise torque force, the weight of the arm uh, multiplied by R2, the distance uh, to the pivot point. And then that's it for the clockwise torque forces. And then moving in the counterclockwise direction would be FB, the biceps uh, force, uh, multiplied by R1. I would just uh, like to mention uh, one thing, of course. Part of the calculation is translational equilibrium, where you have all the downward forces is equal to all the upward forces. So FE plus WA plus WB would equal uh, uh, plus Yes, WB would equal FB. But I do want to mention something, and that's that the uh, force of the biceps uh, probably is not exactly an up and down force, but it's perfectly fine for this problem. But if they were to give you a problem and, and let you know that one of these forces was going at an angle, well then you would have to resolve that force into its x and y components so that you can properly compare it to the others. After all, it's perpendicular distance from the pivot point. So you would have to uh, resolve it in uh, get the y component to compare uh, to these. And in terms of the x component of the force, well if there is an X component of the force, then the elbow joint will also counteract that force because as they're holding the book, uh, the system is in equilibrium, which means uh, from a translational uh, point of view, which means uh, for each axis, uh, one direction, um, that all upward forces is going to equal all downward forces, all forces to the right is going to equal all forces to the left, and all forces uh, inwards will equal all forces outwards. Of course, uh, that's not relevant here, but uh, just so that you have these concepts in the back of your mind in case they change something up, that you will be ready for it.